Shalom, everyone. Uh, we are continuing our limud of Sefer Yishayo, again, a very, very difficult uh, Sefer. And we are up to Perak Yudzayin. You will remember that this chilek of the Svarim are various nevuais that he is giving against different umais ha'elam. These are not nevuais that he's giving to the umos ha'olam. He's giving nevuos to Am Yisrael about the umos ha'olam. And as I indicated in previous shiurim, this is a nechama to Am Yisrael that all of those that persecute us, all of those that try to destroy us, those nations that will eventually, in around a hundred years from this point, destroy the Beis Hamikdash, will themselves be destroyed or conquered. And this is a nechama. Now, one of the difficulties we're going to have as we go through these prakim is some of these nevuais are short-term destruction, i.e. Sancheriv of Assyria is going to destroy them, and that's going to be in the relatively near future, indeed even during Yeshayahu's lifetime. And some of the nevuais are messianic, referring to Gaig umagaik, and one problem is that the Meforshim are sometimes going to be a, a machlokas if a given prophecy is a short-term Sancheirev Nevoa or a long-term Messianic prophecy. That's one difficulty. And another difficulty is the zigzagging that, uh, that Yeshayo will move between short-term Sancheirev and long-term Gogu Magog. And uh, literally, sometimes from one Pusik to the next Pusik, it's going to shift gears dramatically. So because of this, uh, I just have to be honest and say that we don't have definitive understandings, and as the Rambam writes in Hilchos Molochim, all of the inyanim of the Igeula or Asida are really hidden from us. And it's very, very, and the Rambam even says it's kind of a waste of time to take current events and plug it into the messianic process of Geig and Magaik, although the Maisa, many people today like to do that. Uh, the Rambam says these type of speculations do not bring a person to Ava Sashem or Yira Sashem, and we will only understand it in retrospect, in hindsight, that when Mashiach comes, we will then look at the events before Mashiach and we'll be able to say, oh, that was Gog and Magog, that was that war, that was that battle, that was what was described in Yeshayo or Yechesko or any of the other Nevi'im, but you're not going to be able to know it as it is happening uh, simply because uh, the Psukim themselves are very, very unclear. So that's an important caveat uh, perhaps it's frustrating that I need to say as we go through these psukim. So Perak Yitzayan begins with Masa Damesek, a burdensome, because anytime it's a prophecy of Poronias, it is called a Masa, a burden. This is the burden of Damasek. Now again, this will generally be understood as a short-term prophecy, because remember, we have to remember over and over again that this is during the, the these Navuas are during the reign of Ochaz, who was a Russia, he was Chizkiyo's father. Chizkiyo was, of course, a Tzaddik. And in the reign of Ochaz, Pekach ben Remalyo, Melech Yisrael, entered into a confederation with Ratzin, Melech Aram, the king of Syria, to conquer Ochaz as his kingdom. And they had a huge army. And Ochaz is shreklechle afraid of what's going to happen. And this will be a nevua that Damesek itself, before it's able to attack Ochaz's kingdom, will be destroyed by, uh, Syria, by Assyria, by Ashur, uh, uh, and a little later on, the ten tribes in Shomron are going to be exiled. So this is a combination of both the downfall, although it begins Masa Damesek, but you'll see as we go through the Psukim, this Nevoah is a combination of both the fall of Damesek, which occurred during the reign of Ochaz, and the fall of the northern kingdom, Shomron, the capital of which is in Shomron, which will actually occur during the reign of Ochaz's son, so it's going back and forth between those two, Mapalot, 
but both of those mapalot are relatively short term. The downfall of Damesek is in the reign of Achaz, and the exile of the ten tribes uh, will at least be completed during the reign of Chizkiyahu. Okay, so the Pasuk begins, Masa Damesek, the burden of Damesek, Hine Damesek Musar Meir, Behold, Damesek shall be removed from the pro- prominence of having glorious cities. That's kind of a, a convoluted way of saying it will be destroyed. Vahaisa mei mapala. It shall become a mountain, a heap of destruction, a heap of rubble, a pile of junk. Azuvos ore arorer liadarim tienav rabsuvein macharit. Now, Arorer is this. Arorer is one of the cities on the east bank of the Jordan. Arorer was originally a Moabite city. It was conquered by Sichain Melech Amoiri in the time of the Taira, and uh, the uh, Bnei Israel conquered it from Sichain. So Arorer was a city which was part of the Nachla of Ruvain. So Basically, although the ten tribes are not fully exiled until uh, uh, Chizkiyahu's reign, but Ruvain and Gad were already exiled much earlier. So it's making a point that just as Damesek will fall, Arorer, the Nachla of Ruvain, which was, again, as part of the ten tribes, they were in confederation with Aram, is already forsaken. The cities of Arorer have already been devastated by Sancher, or actually Tiglas Peleser, Shalmaneser, there are different kings that were involved. Liadarim Tiena, it shall be for wild sheep just to wander. For Ravtsu, and the sheep will crouch down. Vien Macharid, and no one will disturb them, meaning it will be. Uh, bereft of people, and the animals will just run wild. The nishpas mifzar me'afrayim, and what will eventually happen is not only Arorer, which is the chelik of Ruvain, but all of the fortifications of the ten tribes, which are ruled by an Ephraim, they're called Malchus Ephraim, uh, will be nishpas, will be ceased by Melech Ashur, umam lacha midam esek umishararam, and similarly the mamlacha from Damesek and the rest of Syria will be taken away. Now, chronologically, again, uh, Damesek and Aram will fall to Ashur before the ten tribes. Damesek and Aram will fall in the reign of Ochaz, and the ten tribes, the rest of the ten tribes, will fall in the reign of Chizkiyahu. Kichvayd b'nei Yisrael yiyu. Niyom Hashem Tzavakos. The, the honor of B'nai Yisrael, B'nai Yisrael here means the ten tribes, shall be like this, meaning like we just described, Azuvos, so says Hashem. Meaning this is the Chorban of the Malchus Aseris Hashvatim. Now again, although on some level this is a tragedy, these are, these are Jewish people, a large segment of the Jewish people, a majority of the Jewish people. But it is a nechama to Malchus Yehuda because at this critical juncture in history, Malchus Yisrael is ganging up with, uh, with Aram to be machriv Malchus Yehuda. And therefore, in a sense, the downfall of Malchus Yisrael is a nechama to Ochaz and uh, Malchus Yehuda. For Hoya Bayomahu, and on that day when the ten tribes are exiled, Yidal Kavayd Yaakov, the glory of Yaakov, shall become impoverished. Umishman Bisaro Yerazan, the fat of his flesh that describes decadence and hedonism, Yerazan shall become emaciated. And Ashur, Assyria, Sancheriv, will be like the one who gathers the harvest. He plucks up all the grain 
and his arms will be filled with sheaves. In other words, that'll be the um, what Sancheirev will simply be capturing and exiling all of the Yidden of the ten tribes. And what will be left? V'haya kimolaket shibalim be emek rifaim. Emek rifaim is a valley outside of Yerushalayim, and apparently it is a stony valley. You cannot really grow that much. Only little patches of grass or grain can come up among the rocks. And it says that those that will be left after Sancheirev murders and exiles will be like the little amount of Shibalim that could be gathered in Emek Rifaim, very little. Vanishar bo ololos, ololos are undeveloped olives or grapes. Kino gave Sayas, like when you hit an olive tree, apparently the way they used to harvest olives is they would simply beat the branches and the olives would fall down. But the ololos sometimes remain, so there will be the ololos after you hit an olive tree. Shnayim, Shleisha, Gargarim, Bereisha, Mir. At the top, of the branches, there'll be two or three little olives that are left. Uh, or arba chamisha b'sifah poria. And if it's a fertile branch, there'll be four or five olives. Tiny, small numbers. Niyum Hashem Elokei Yisrael. So this is going to be a tragedy. So, so note in the psukim, we've moved away from the downfall of Damasek and we're now focusing on the downfall of the ten tribes, which will be in the reign of Chizkiyo. But, just as the Torah says, in exile and in persecution, there's a great, great silver lining, a gift from Hashem, because that brings us to reflection, to introspection, to cheshbon hanefesh, to tshuva. And that in turn brings us to Geula. And that is what the Navi promises as well. By Yaim Hahu, on that day, Slavdav day, but on that point of devastation, those few that are left, whether they're the few in the ten tribes or the few in Malchus Shehuda, Yisheh Adam Aleseyu. Man will lean on his creator. Man will turn to God because everything is devastated. El Kadesh Yisrael Tirena. And their eyes will see the Holy One of Israel, Hashem that takes care of Israel. Flo Yisha El Hamizbachos Maiseyodav. And he will no longer turn to the altars that he made to the idols that he himself made, he will not pay attention to the getchkas, to the idols that he fashioned with his own hands. Asherim, or the trees that were planted to Avedi Zara. Chamanim, Chamanim is the sun, or the monuments that he made to the sun. He will know that it's Sheker Veheva. But, by Yaimahu, and in that day, again, the exile of the ten tribes, Yiyu Are Mu'uzo, the cities which were so strong and so powerful, Ki Azuvat HaChoresh V'yomir, Asher Ozbu B'nei B'nei Yisrael, will be like an abandoned forest, right? A forest simply means uh, trees, grass, weeds are growing. They're, in other words, it'll be so desolate that the trees and the grass and the weeds will take over. Asher Azram of Nebene Yisrael, as the Canaanites left the land in a desolate condition when they fled or were defeated by Bene Yisrael, that will happen to the ten tribes. Vahaisa Shemama, and their beautiful, fertile, populated land with cities and buildings will become Al Yedei Sancheirev, this will be during the reign of, of, of Chizkiyo, will be Shamama, desolate and empty. And now Yeshayo speaks in first directly to the ten tribes, referring to them, Balashen Nekeva, Malchus Yisrael, 
Kishachacht Elokei Yishech. All of this came because you have forgotten the God of your salvation. Vitzur Mauzeich Lo Zachart, and you did not remember the rock that gave you strength and protection. Al Kain, Titi Nite Neamonim. So although when you were planted, because the Jewish people are often called a tree, now we are, the Mekubalim say, or the Maral says, an upside-down tree. An earthly tree has its roots in Shemayim, uh, its roots on earth, and it grows towards Shemayim. We are in Elon Hafuch. Our roots are in Shemayim, and we grow into the earth. So when we were planted, when we were taken out of Mitzrayim, when we were given a Taira, we were planted with our roots in Shamayim, like an Elon Hafuch. And yet, Zamores Zor Tizra'enu. We took our seeds, which could have produced Torah, Mitzvos, Masim Tovim, and instead we planted it in strange and foreign ideologies. Bayom nitech tisak seni. On the day that you were planted, again, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Matan Torah, that's called our Nitiyah, you grew to great heights. Uba boker, and in the mornings, Zarech tafrichi, your seed flowered and produced beautiful things. And yet, what happened to those beautiful flowers and those beautiful plants? Neid kotsir biyom nachla. The harvest neid has wandered away, meaning there's no harvest. Biyom nachla, unusual word, on the day of sickness. So nachla here does not mean inheritance. Nachla means a time of tsara, chayli. That refers to emotional chayli. The beautiful flowers, the beautiful trees, never materialized into something that could be harvested. It's as if the harvest was carried away in the day of sickness and agony and despair. Ke'ev anush, severe pain. Now again, there's a double metaphor here. On one hand, we're describing the enemy as carrying away the harvest, meaning killing and exiling your people. On the other side of the metaphor, it's describing how we diverted our harvest to foreign ideologies like Avodah Zohar. So the Neid Kotsir is both referring to what? Sancheriv did to the ten tribes and it's referring to what the ten tribes did to themselves by rebelling against Hashem. But now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Ashur itself, as Syria, so we began with Aram, Syria, but now we're talking about Ashur. And remember that one of the great, great miracles in Nach will be the destruction of of Sancheirev's army when he turns towards Yerushalayim. This is the first night of Pesach in the reign of Chizkiyahu. 185,000 of his soldiers die in one night through a Malach Hashem. So this is now being referred to, meaning in spite of the fact that we just described the tremendous tsar that Ashur is going to do to Klal Yisrael, but Ashur and all of the nations that Ashur gathered to help him, help it in its devastation, they themselves will be punished. Hoy, Hamain Amim Rabim, Hoy, alas, you multitude of so many nations. Kahamos Yamim Nehemoyan, you're going against the Jewish people, first the ten tribes and then eventually Yerushalayim like a turbulent sea, an ocean, a tsunami. You are tumulting. The tumult of the nations is like the tumult, the noise of great powerful waters. 
Lo'umim kishon mayim rabim ishon. You are tumulting like an assembly of great powerful waters. But go'ar bo, God will rebuke these nations, like he pushes back the waters. Venas mi merchak, and they will run away for great distances. Verudaf kamotz harim lifnei ruach. They will be pursued like the chaff of dust that blows on the mountains where there's a lot of wind. Uchagalgal if sufa, and like tumbleweed in front of a storm. All of you powerful nations, Hashem will repel. Now again, in the short term, this is referring to the Mapala in the days of Chizkiyo, the miraculous defeat of Ashur at the gates of Yerushalayim. And now, Yeshayo ends speaking to the Jews, Lo'es Erev. When the Assyrians will come to destroy Yerushalayim, you'll be approaching night. It's like, you know, two minutes to midnight. Vine bala, you will have terror in your heart. The Jewish people will have terror. And yet, Baterem Baker, before the morning breaks, Enenu, the enemy will be gone. Sechelek Shaysenu. This is what will happen to those who try to plunder the Jewish people. The Gairal, and this will be the fate. Libozazenu. To those who, again, plunder us. Biza. Now, again, there's a short term and a long term. The long term is Sancheriv. The long term are all of the enemies that try to afflict, destroy, torture the Jewish people. And that's why there's a double expression. Rashi says one is the downfall of Sancheriv, the other is the eventual downfall in the days of Gaigu Magaik that is going to bring Mashiach. So that is the end of Perek Yitzhayim.